Hello and welcome to the German Guy Reviews. And from the bottom of my heart to everyone out there, welcome to another edition of Kingdom Hearts, a retrospective. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep is a prequel, taking place roughly 10 years before the events of Kingdom Hearts 1. The game that will finally explain some critical questions we always had and even some we never asked before. Of course, being a Kingdom Hearts game, my brain machine still feels like it drank 500 liters of ice water. So how amazing is this game? Well, I'm a tad bit biased, so I don't know why you're asking me, but while I have you already here, let's take a look together. We begin the game by watching yet another music video. Only this time we don't see things that already happened, but things that are going to happen. So you first will understand all of this long after the game is over. Tetsuo Nomura wants to reach a minimum level of confusion in his games. It's in his contract. We really begin on a dark windy night on Destiny Islands, where a scary old man leaves a boy that looks like Roxas and appears to be in a catatonic state on a tree. And then that boy takes a dive to the heart, a physical manifestation of the inside of a person's heart. Also, he is half naked. Jacob, keep your shirt on! No! The boy hears a voice telling him that his shining light brought him here. He looks around and sees that his heart is broken. To save him from dying, the voice offers him to unite their hearts, and an ominous boy agrees. The old man who was about to leave is caught by surprise when the boy suddenly wakes up, revealing a keyblade. Well, the guy that sold me those roofy pills on eBay can expect a very bad review, let me tell you that. In the next scene, the boy wakes up in his room, looks out the window and is excited to see a meteor shower. Considering that a meteor shower in this universe means the death of an entire planet, it comes across like being excited for one of those creepy abandoned theme parks. The boy, whose name is Ventus, lays in the grass for a while until his friends Terra and Aqua join him. Ooh! Now if you let Axel and Sora join your group, then you have Fire and Heart also and you can summon Captain Planet! They watch the night sky for a bit and talk about this and that. Very reminiscent of Sora, Riku and Kairi looking out at the sea and talking about their lives. The three are students in the ancient art of keyblade wielding. It has its origins in the epic legend of Herrn Jens not being able to find his car keys. Terra and Aqua will have their final exams tomorrow. So Aqua made three good luck charms, saying no matter what happens afterwards, they will always find one another. That would be the last night. We ever spent beneath the same stars. The next day, their master, named Erequos, voiced by Mark Hamill, orders them as their first trial to destroy some floating orbs. Okay, I mean, I haven't studied keyblade wielding, but this seems to me like something you would have a newbie do. I mean, literally the first thing Luke Skywalker had to do in his training granted not his official training, was to defend himself from flowing orbs. However, these orbs get corrupted by a guest of theirs, Master Xehanort, who you might have noticed is old and weak and does not look at all like his later self. Did I miss how Disney bought the rights to Benjamin Button? Anyway, they defeat the out of control orbs and continue as planned. The next test is to fight against one another. Not to win, but to reveal their nature. Terra gets overwhelmed by the darkness within him. 
The consequence of this is that he is denied the title of Keyblade Master. Doesn't matter, man. I'm gonna do it like my dad's. I'm gonna do freelance Keyblade wielding. Aqua, on the other hand, did pass and must stay so she can learn about all the secrets that a Keyblade Master has to know. You can use this thing to hack into every email address. Ventus tries to cheer him up, but he wants some alone time. Mumped out and depressed, Terra goes outside and wonders where the darkness even came from. Well, you have been reading a lot of radical right-wing blogs lately. Meanwhile, Master Xehanot talks to a strange fellow who wears a much cooler version of Riku's costume. A Hawaiian skirt? Seriously, Forces of Darkness? I thought you had Corella de Vil on your side. Ask her about fashion. They say that they need to give Ventus some incentive to leave his home for their plan. We then cut back to Terra, who is being told by Xehanort that no matter how hard he trains, Arakos will never accept him as a master. But he thinks he is fine. Xehanort also has some disturbingly positive things to say about darkness. The darkness has nothing to fear. And yet, how frustrating that Arrakis refutes its power. Darkness cannot be destroyed. It can only be channeled. Yes. Thank you, Master. Doop do doop do do. I'm Terra, and I'm not at all concerned that this guy is exposing the opposite of the philosophy my master has taught me. Anyhow, the bells on this incredibly unsafe building that looks like it's going to fall apart if I'm looking at it the wrong way starts to ring. Then again, fairy tale worlds always violate safety codes. What, do you think the witch with her candy house or that giant from that beanstalk tail had a permit to build that? Seriously, stop ringing those bells. The vibration might be enough already to cause a collapse. Meanwhile, in Ventus' room, he gets a surprise visit from the other boy in the black leather, telling him that Terra will leave him behind and change into another person before he knows it. Ventus of course believes none of this, but the stranger continues and says he will never find the real truth unless he leaves his homeworld. Ventus then gets a little bit concerned. Another reason why I like this series so much. I can identify with the characters. They are so insecure that every little thing gets them catastrophizing and collapses their entire world. What? My friend didn't call today even though he said he would? What if he doesn't want to be my friend anymore? Meanwhile, Master Ericus has been informed by Master Yen Zed that the Princesses of Heart are in danger by evil creatures called the Unversed that have started appearing everywhere. He also tells us that Master Xehanort is nowhere to be found. Although Terra is not a Keyblade Master, he still is a Keyblade wielder and therefore a protector of the balance of the universe, which is why he and Aqua are asked to eliminate the Unversed and find Xehanort. And kill Batman! <laughs> Master Arrakis explains that he opened up the pathways between the worlds so that the two can travel freely. Remind me again why the worlds need to be separated again if he can just do that? Because in this very same game we meet Scrooge McDuck who tells us he has built an interplanetary business. And this doesn't seem to be a concern of the Keyblade Order. Before they leave, Master Ericus tells Terra that he loves him like his own son, but he simply can't make him a Keyblade Master as long as he is obsessed with power and fears to lose. He tells him this mission is his second chance to become a master. With this in mind, Terra leaves eagerly. Before she can be on her way, Erekos stops Aqua and tells her that he can sense that the darkness that Terra revealed during the examination runs very deep. He is worried about Terra and tells Aqua to keep a close eye on him and bring him back if it turns out that his darkness is too strong for him. Before Terra takes off, Ventus runs up to him and tries to tell him about his worries concerning their friendship. But Terra thinks he only meant to tell him to be careful, so he cuts him off by saying it's okay and then leaves. I mean, that should maybe be enough for him too, I think. Part of being absolutely insecure about everything is that everything, positive and negative, is seen as absolutely important. 
But apparently it's not. Ventus, scared to lose his friends, follows them on his awesome space surfboard. Master Arrakus panics and tells Aqua that she has to bring him back. We cut back to Terra, who has arrived in a quiet little world at a beautiful lake. Wait, you have a space vehicle and still entering this world through a portal. Where do you park? He then immediately is welcomed by the Unversed. I apologize in advance if I may call them heartless, because there really is no difference. Anyway, one of the Unversed tries to escape and Terra follows him. When he catches the creature, he runs into Maleficent, who wonders that Terra isn't asleep like everybody else in the castle. He responds by asking who she is. I just love these kinds of stories, where nobody is suspicious in any way whatsoever. Of course that woman looks like an evil sorceress, but that is no reason to be prejudgmental. Haven't you learned anything in tolerance class? Don't judge a book by its cover, father. That's what you taught me. When a book is called guns, drugs, hookers, and no pants, I think I don't need to read it. Maleficent introduces herself and so does Terra. Because he had to ask this question, she knows that Terra is not from this world. It's also possible that he doesn't know her because he is from another continent. Planets are still big. Then again, you can see every house from outer space, so I guess we are talking Master Caillou's home sizes here. He asks her if she has met Master Xehanort, but she claims she has never met a person by this name. The witch does, however, remember someone coming out of the castle talking about imprisoning the light, and Maleficent thinks he could have meant Princess Aurora with that. Terra enters the castle to find Aurora sleeping in her bed. Maleficent appears and tells him that she needs the princess's heart and that of the other six to rule all worlds. Maleficent reveals that she knows what a keyblade is. Terra figures that she can only know this because she met Xehanort and he demands that she tells him where he is. But the evil fairy is not swayed by this and says that she wants him to use his keyblade and give her Aurora's pure heart. Terra, not surprisingly, has no interest in helping the old witch. This doesn't matter, however, since Maleficent senses, or is it smells in this universe, the darkness that sleeps in him. Is no one using shampoo or perfume anymore? You and Kyrie smell the same. Maleficent uses Terra's darkness and forces him to give her the heart. She starts talking to herself, saying she can't believe that all the things Xehanna told her about will become true. Okay, I can't understand that the good guys are trusting like little dogs, but Maleficent? Lady, don't you think it's a little bit strange that an old guy walks up to you and tells you how to be conqueror of the whole universe? It's like trusting in one of those scam emails telling you how to earn 500 million dollars in three easy steps. $280 for this image, $180 for this one, and another $300 for this one, and so forth. You can do this unlimited times because you don't need a camera. You will not have to take any pictures yourself. You don't need social media followers. And I will give you a free tool where you can get this done in less than 10 minutes of work. Get fucked. Whatever. All we can do is let her be a pawn. Power hungry fools like her and Gul'dan are a match made in the underworld. Terra awakens from his trance and realizes what he has done. Maleficent offers him to rule the galaxy as mother and son. But you can suspect where this is going. You seem to be mixed up. I'm a peacekeeper, not a tyrant. Hmm. For a peacekeeper, you're off to an exceptionally poor start. Maleficent vanishes, leaving Terra to fight the Unversed alone. We defeat a giant living spinning wheel and then return to Princess Aurora. Really Unversed, from all the things you could have picked you take this. 
then again, as a gamer, I fight much weirder things. In Super Mario, I recently fought a box of crayons. Terra feels sorry for being weak and he promises to return a heart, as soon as he found they are not, and his strength to defeat the darkness within him. Well, yeah, you are right, Terra. Aurora isn't going anywhere soon. One world done, another to come. Terra arrives in another kingdom. It is the kingdom of the evil queen who asks her magic mirror on the wall who is the fairest of them all. The queen notices Terra, who has sneaked into her castle. Since there is no point in hiding anymore, he comes out and straight up asks her if she has seen Zia or not. If I didn't know any better, I would assume that he is a guy from an UFO cult he wants me to join. Have you found Lord Xehanort yet? She says no and Terra wants to leave, but the queen stops him and says she has a job for him. If he succeeds, she will ask her magic mirror where he can find Xehanort. There is a young maid who resides in this castle. Her name is Snow White. Kill her. And to make sure you do not fail, bring back her heart in this. Her heart? I don't understand. Nobody does, Terra. Does she mean her soul or her heart heart? Come to think of it, do all organs have an astral version of themselves? Anyway, it's Merva either way, and so we can't do it, so... Where can I find her? Holy shit, Snacks! No, don't worry, the darkness has not taken over him. Actually, he only asks because he thinks that Snow White, as described by the Queen, could be one of the princesses of the heart, which could lead him to master Xehanort. By the way, have you ever noticed that the evil Queen and Maleficent could be twin sisters? They share a lot of similarities, and both of their worlds are right next to one another. Just a theory. A Disney theory! Terra finds Snow White in a flower field, where she dances around, collects flowers and is cuter than a sugar injection directly into the tongue. On Worst appears, scaring the young maid and making her run into the woods. Terra fights the monsters off and then tries to find Snow White, but ultimately has to accept that he has lost her. That doesn't matter anyhow, since she told him that she doesn't know Isaiah not, leaving him with only one option, the magic mirror. He returns to the Queen's dungeon and of course Her Majesty is furious that he didn't bring her Snow White's heart. She orders the magic mirror to destroy us, but the mirror replies that murdering people is not part of his business practice, only answering questions. But some mind manipulating potion changes is quick. In one of the most amazing battles that I have seen in the series, we defeat a ghost that lives in the mirror. Having the upper hand, Terra orders the Queen to ask the mirror his question. Magic mirror, instruct this knave. Give him the answers he doth crave. Beyond both light and dark he dwells, where war was waged upon the fells. Is that all? Wow, that is incredibly not specific. Did you get this mirror by any chance from a yard sale from the mystery shack? Kind of feels like it. Anyway, I think this is enough for one day. We will continue our journey the next time. The German guy out and Auf Wiedersehen.